this is Brett. And this is Daniel. We're with the Wolf Group at Simply Vegas Real Estate. Today, we wanted to bring you seven of the wildest homes in Las Vegas. So it's not the wildest, but it's our top seven. Yeah, these are our, some of our favorite homes in the city. Daniel, what's the first home on the list? So the very first home that we have over here is the underground house. So what that is, is a regular house, two-story from the surface level with a lot of land around it. So you'd be none the wiser. But special about this house is it has an elevator and a stairwell that leads 23 feet down the surface level. And where you'll find right there is 14,000 square feet of space. So the underground house features a main house with two bedrooms and three bathrooms and then a casita, um, along with a four-hole punting green, a pool, a couple of spa, hot tubs, or sauna, uh, a bar and a barbecue area. Um, and it also has dynamic lighting, so it allows you to feel as if you're in the daylight or under the stars. Um, under, over the years, the home has hosted weddings, receptions, some corporate events. And some filmmaking. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they've done that. And... It was on the market just recently for five point nine million. Okay. I believe they also started at eighteen million, but they never got like any offers or any showings gotcha, then, gotcha. you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a very cool house. Mm. Obviously, take a check it out here, and then uh, we'll move on to the next house, which is Rose Manor. Rose Manor is an iconic replica of an eighteen hundreds castle situated on Lake Sahara in the, the Las Vegas neighborhood of the Lakes, uh, which is out west Las Vegas, uh, just before you get to Summerlin. It was uh, completed in nineteen eighty or nineteen ninety one. Started com uh, construction nineteen eighty eight. It's a six bedroom, six bath home. Again, looks just like a castle, spread out over nearly twelve thousand square feet. So I'm huge, huge into medieval stuff, you okay. know. Lord of the Rings, uh, The Witcher, all the European stuff like Danes and Vikings. I'm very into that. So Rose Manor is my top pick. If I were to live in a home and I had like all these millions of dollars and I, and I was in the market for that type of house, then I would absolutely go there. No, that's a really cool house. Yeah. Get this. Each of the 144 windows in the house. Yeah, you heard that right. 144 <laughs> windows are either stained or beveled glass. And there's over a million dollars worth of carved mahogany throughout the home. Wow. So imagine you just waking up and the sun hits all these windows and all you see are like red remnants. Like very vampiric and really everything cool. too, you know? Yeah, that's really <laughs> yeah. cool. So being on Lake Sahara, it's one of the few waterfront communities in and around Las Vegas. It actually has its own private boat deck. And most recently in 2019... Uh, Rose Manor sold for three million two hundred fifty thousand bucks. Wow, what a steal! Yeah, what a steal <laughs> for a castle! Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, what's next on our list here, Daniel? So here we have Pirates Cove. So what that is is it's not directly in Las Vegas, but it's adjacent to a small city called Boulder City. And what that is is a very unique residence. I mean, I don't know like, yeah, like how to Cove describe it. You know. Uh, the theme is all pirate, and and it's all laid out like a getaway resort that makes you feel like a pirate. You know, with all the statues and and all the knickknacks that they have in there, you really feel like, hey, you know what? Like I'm, I'm Blackbeard over here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I want to watch Pirates of the Caribbean over here in Pirates Cove. Yeah, Pirates that would Cove complete is it. <laughs> awesome. It's at over twenty bedrooms and over twenty bathrooms, spread over five buildings. Originally, it was built kind of as a res like Daniel mentioned, as a resort, but it was a private resort specifically for the the family, the own owners of the the home for their kids, grandkids, so on and so forth. What a vision to have, yeah, huh? Really, cool. what a vision. Um, three swimming pools, two hot tubs, two really cool water slides that that wind through a replica pirate ship, um, and along with a 40-foot-tall diving board. So when they say, I tell you to walk the plank, you got a 40-foot fall. <laughs> hey, whoa. <laughs> hey, nobody pushed me there because I've never been um, diving. Yeah. It's afraid of heights? Yeah. Uh, I just haven't done it. You know, I, just, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, six legs all day and everything, <laughs> you know, but I just haven't dove and swam. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, Pirates Cove, as Daniel mentions, in Boulder City, which is about 45 minutes off the Las Vegas Strip southeast. Um, almost to Arizona, but it's uh, out there by Lake Mead as you're going to the uh, Hoover Dam. Yep, so, it's on so the it's just, just right there. Yeah. So what they do with the property now is they host it for outside rentals, uh, so for corporate events or cool. or if people want to pull up their money and be in a very, very unique house that, I mean, I don't think we'll 
ever see a house like this. I mean, you know, with all the codes and everything that. Yeah, it's it's pretty intense. It looks like straight out of a Disney movie, uh, as you can see here in the in the video. Um, but moving to our next house is Pir Paradise Crest Manor. Daniel, tell us a little bit about Paradise Crest Manor. So it was built in 1969 as a four-bedroom home originally owned by a, a lifelong correct collector. So um, speaking of which, I just drove by the area and I got some footage. I'll pull it up on the video right now. And it was a very unique property because I was across the street in in some other lot, uh, some other neighborhood, and I see these weird, um, what do you call them? Uh, statues and things right so I'm like, hey what's going on over here so i pulled out my phone and i started recording and as i approached the property i'm like no way this is the one that we're talking about today you know so a collector bought one of the homes and then he bought two of the other homes all on the north side however did go into foreclosure just recently and he had to auction off a number of his knickknacks because well you know he couldn't take it out of the property nor with him so it started as a four-bedroom home owned by a collector and um, it was all three properties owned by him until just recently i believe it was in uh, 2019 or uh, 2017 2017 2017 right and uh every year on halloween day they do like an open house where you buy a ticket and go visit the property and they deck it out with lights and you can cool. see like all the knickknacks and take some pretty good time so right now um it's no longer the first showing unless it's the owner and Halloween right there. And there's a lot of signs that say, hey, you know, don't disturb like, the new owners over here. Like, please have some respect and keep it private. Yeah, it's a really cool house. A lot of, uh, you know, Nevada, Vegas artifacts. It's kind of a museum mm -hmm. um, or it used to be. It's uh, the, the current owners that have taken over the original main house have tried to keep it to its, you know, original you know style they just there's just not open to the public like it used to right oh it looks like a museum yeah. like as i was filming on the road there it didn't look like a house you know look like like what's this doing on a residential area yeah. oh and get this so underneath the basement of the garage uh the owner has a an egyptian chamber and right there he does have a sarcophagus where he, he'd like to be buried that's crazy the forerunner the former owner, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah gotcha. the former owner. Mm -hmm. so, well, yeah, really a, a really interesting house. Um, our next one on the list is probably one of the more extravagant residences, oh, <laughs> uh, not just in Las Vegas, but perhaps in the entire Western United States. Saying um, it humbly. <laughs> obviously, there's a lot of crazy estates in California and you know some of the other you know big metropolitan areas in and around the country. But this one is, as far as Vegas is concerned, it's to me, I think it's probably the biggest, well, at least one of the biggest oh, re single family you know, residences in, in the city. Um, and it's the former Prince of Brunei house. Um, over 110,000 square feet of living space on 16 acres that's spread along amongst 10 buildings. Um, compound was originally constructed in 1996 and it was about 90 percent complete at the time of its most recent sale at the tail end of 2023 um, it's in the neighborhood of spanish trail um, and the home total home features over 20 bedrooms and 40 bathrooms um, and the coolest thing to me is i think it's is that it's got a 40,000 square foot athletic club which has a badminton a squash court indoor pool a bowling alley and a nightclub um, in addition to the main home the property includes two guest homes and villas a study pavilion indoor parking for 16 vehicles garden terraces three outdoor pools and tennis courts um, and also recent you know recently uh, i guess it was mid 2000s i guess no, that would be recently but um, it was home to michael jackson and when it did sell at the end of this last year, it sold for twenty five million bucks. Only twenty five million Only $25 bucks million for dollars. for all that yeah, space. All that space. Yeah, yeah, imagine that in California, right? We'd probably be at eighty or hundred million. It, it's its own compound for mm -hmm. twenty five million. I think it's it's deserved. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's deserved for for ten buildings, yeah. hundred thousand square feet, and there's a lot of history there. Right. You know. So driving up to the area, I mean, overlooking from drone footage and everything, right? 
Uh, it's pretty extravagant. It's 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 one of those that you see like in films that have yeah. a huge gate and you enter and you have to drive all the way in up until you get up to the main house. And I think that's very, very some well, something. You know, I mean, like, what do you call that? Um, here in Vegas, like I don't really get that that many options of homes that have that type of approach, and it has like um, the caretakers areas like mm-hmm. all the way in the back of the property and there's property for all the guests for the main family as well and it's it's a lot of property you know 110,000 square feet on no. was it 16 acres yeah 16 right. acres 110,000 square feet can you imagine yeah so we'll put up that drone photo right yeah, there so there's some really, yeah. it's, it's a really cool house uh again just sold 25 million bucks uh one of the most expensive sales in the history of the city uh, but it's like again deservedly slow. It's a, it's a fantastic mm-hmm. home. Yeah, and I really love that it's your own neighborhood right there. You know, I mean, all we're missing are just well stores because we have all the gym stuff inside, spas, private everything. I mean, it certainly could be its own city. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So our next one, Daniel, what's the next house? So the next one is Casa de Shenandoah. So with a this is a cool property. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a 39-acre ranch located in the southeast of Las Vegas. It's a massive property and well-known for being the home to the Las Vegas legend, Wade Newton. Awesome. Wade mm-hmm. Newton house. So what can you tell us about the house? So, you know, what do you love about it? So Casa <laughs> de Shenandoah, the coolest thing to me is this house has its own private airport terminal. Oh my god! It's got an airport terminal. Okay. That's the reason why we had to choose this one. Was yeah, so. name a house that has its own runway. Yeah. <laughs> so the total house is 50, 57,000 square feet of living space. It has a total of uh, main home uh, and seven additional living home, you know, residences on the property. Uh, a car museum that can hold over a hundred cars, horse stables at a, a horse car hospital. Museum. <laughs> Come yeah. On. What is it's that? A, it's got a, a, an exotic <laughs> zoo, a pet zoo for. You know, just a small one, of course, but right. um, for animals and the, the airport terminal. It, what house has its own airport terminal? I had to choose it because of that. I mean, yeah. I, mean I can't name another one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, how do you how do you get the city to pass it? Like, hey, you know, I like a terminal in my house. <laughs> well, if you're Wayne Newton, I think you can get anything you want done in Las At Vegas. At this point, right? Yeah. Being Mr. Las Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, in our opinion, it's one of the most iconic homes in the history of the city. And we had to obviously highlight it here as one of the seven wildest homes because it really is one a wild house when you consider all everything that it has going for it. It really is that standard mansion feel. Like as you open the front doors, I have both of those staircases that lead up and around. It's if it's that classic vision for sure. Yeah, it's very quintessential Vegas for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, recently in 2023, the property was listed for sale for twenty four million nine hundred ninety five thousand bucks. Um, I don't believe it's sold. Yeah, I don't think it's sold yet. No, huh? Not yet. But you know, once again, twenty five million. Twenty five million. Just like the other one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What would you choose? So between this and that and the Brunei house. Right, right. Um, <laughs> airport terminal or hundred thousand <laughs> square feet. You know. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, but you're close to the airport as well. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I mean, true. you could charter. I, I I don't know. I think they're both fantastic properties, and I think they're. I mean, all of these properties are really unique in their own right. Right. And I don't think that you could say one is better than the other. They're just, they're all very different and they're all fun. So. What can you say, right? Let's uh, head to our seventh of our seven wildest homes. So this one's really cool because it's not like the others. What makes this one different, Daniel? Definitely not. So what this is, is... The 59th floor at the Palm Place, the penthouse. Okay. So it's in the heart of Las Vegas, and it features a 360-degree view of the whole Las Vegas city. You know, so imagine that. I mean, the last time I was at the 59th floor of anything was out of New York at the Empire State Building, you know? Okay. So imagine that view, like, your friends are out there, like, in the, in the outside patio, like, watching a movie in the, I think it was 100... 100 inches or 100 feet of, of uh, 
projection space. Oh, I, I don't know the exact size. I just know it's massive. Right, right. Yeah. So imagine that you guys are outside and, I mean, I would want to look at them like, hey, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I like to myself a little like that. But, I mean, it's it's a very unique property. And I believe it has the highest view of the whole city being placed right there. One of. One, one of. of I, yeah, I know Trump is up there too. Mm -hmm. uh, the tallest residential unit at Trump is just about the same height. But this is one, probably one of the top two or three. Mm -hmm. at, at worst so this unit as a whole is 6,000 square feet again on the 59th floor it's got panoramic views of the entire city and the mountains uh, it's a really cool entertaining pad it's got a commercial grade kitchen with a full bar and a DJ booth so if you like to entertain this is the spot because you've got all the you know space to for up to 500 people indoor and outdoor wow. with <laughs> views of the strip and the mountains you got your own DJ booth uh, as Daniel mentioned, on the outdoor terrace, it's got its own movie theater and uh, outdoor screening area, hot tub, um, outdoor, outdoor kitchen. Uh, inside, 30-foot floor-to-ceiling windows in the great room give just an incredible views of the entire city. So if you like some natural lighting, 36 feet of that all day, every day. Yeah. At the time it sold in 2019, it was, I believe, the high one of the high, one of if not the highest price condo sale in the history of the city at 12 million 475 thousand. Uh, that's been re since overtaken by the penthouse at the Martin that sold oh, for over 16 absolutely. million dollars, and it the entire penthouse top floor as well there. But in our opinion, this one's just a cooler unit so that's yeah. why it made the list over the others right so imagine that like do you tell your friends or your date hey come over you know really quickly at the palm place all right you know cool whatever hey, oh but i'm at the 59th floor oh okay yeah. so when you're showing the home to your friends your family and you know like your dates and everything you know just imagine the reactions that you get so obviously like each and every home is going to get a more of a different reaction but who's ever that high in their daily life yeah you know now yeah this is this is definitely, this type of high though not the other one <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely a one-of-a-kind property uh another cool fun fact about this this was actually uh maloof residents obviously they were the ones who built the palms originally and they were original owners uh phil maloof and mm -hmm. this is just a really cool 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 unit um again white made the list is because we're looking for the craziest, wildest homes in Vegas, and you know what's not more wild than having a top floor penthouse of palms with a giant movie screen on your, your patio <laughs> and picturesque views of the entire city and the spa. So the spa. get that twenty five thousand square feet of terrace space to hold five hundred guests, and on the inside, you know. So imagine a party like like, whoa, <laughs> you know. I mean, I would be afraid of for for liability reasons. Yeah, that's you know, <laughs> it's just it's just a cool spot. Right, right. Like, wow. So mm -hmm. that brings us to the end of our seven wildest homes in Vegas, at least according to us. And we're we're by no means experts, but we just we like these houses, so we wanted to share them with you. I think we should have done ten at this point because ten. I thought it was going to take a lot longer, but hey, you, know. you want to do next? We should have done ten. I think seven's a good number. What do you think? Seven's a good number. Seven's a good number. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Let us know if you want to see a lot more. <laughs> and let us know which one you like the most. Yeah, give oh us some God. feedback. What's your favorite? Or if there's one we missed that we need to talk about next time, let us know. Um, and also be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, and follow our community spotlight series that goes around the city, you know, a couple of, you know, a couple of times a month and just checks out new communities mm. in the area and get you familiar with neighborhoods, what's selling, what types of homes are available in certain areas of town and just familiarize yourself with Vegas, especially if you're not from here. Right. So there's tons to do in Vegas now, you know, so it's not only to gamble, but sports has really, yeah. really taken off over here, you know, so we have... Our own hockey league, if if you don't already know, right? If you're not too into sports, but we have Allegiant Stadium, T-Mobile Stadium, and we and we I do believe that we still have the A's uh, coming, coming over here, yeah, the and they're gonna make another stadium. Yeah, for baseball. I mean, the Super Bowl was just here what two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, wow. So, you know, I mean, what better place yeah. to host and to hold all the visitors here in Vegas? Mm -hmm. They should do like a residency here for the Super Bowl. <laughs> so final thoughts over here, right? So I would say Pirates Cove is probably one of the most unique homes and, you know, properties. So that's mm -hmm. one of my favorites. But 
Oh, it's hard for me to choose. I mean, you know, I'll probably go for the castle myself because of my affinity to European movies, you know, yeah, like yeah. like out there, uh, Game of Thrones and those types of games. You know, I grew up with it, so I would choose the castle. Rose Manor. I'm fond of the underground house, to be oh, honest. Oh, God, the underground house. It's, it's cool. It's a bunker. It's unique and different. Obviously, I probably would update it a little bit if it was mine, but... Where do you get a chance to live underground with 14,000 square feet? <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. Well, if you want to party real hard, I mean, well, nobody's going to hear you, right? Who's going to hear all those exactly. through the dirt? I mean, exactly. Um, yeah. Wow. So, well, thanks for joining mm. us. We hope you enjoyed Seven of the Wildest Homes in Vegas. And uh, like I said, please like and subscribe to our channel and follow more of our fun content. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.